Here is a 2024 Mercedes AMG GLE 63 in obsidian black over macchiato beige Napa leather. This year gets a mid-cycle refresh. We get a plug-in variant, which is the GLE 400E that has over 370 horsepower and nearly 480 pound-feet of torque. Also getting an off-road variant, but it still has a problem, which I'm going to explain. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and in the front, Mercedes says that it has a jet wing design. The lower is going to get a lot more aggressive. The 63 grille that has the vertical bars and it goes into the multi-beam LED headlights and daytime runnings. The twin dome hood that normally would house the three point badge, this is AMG. So now we get the AMG badging placed on top. And the GLE 580 off-road variant will increase the ground clearance by 1.2 inches, which I don't necessarily think we need a rugged off-road performance, but I can understand because the market is going that route. Housed underneath the hood is something special because it's handcrafted. It's a 4.0 liter bi-turbo V8 producing 603 horsepower and 623 pound-feet of torque paired to an AMG Speed Shift 9-speed TCT automatic transmission, which is going to get the fastest shifts for that bi-turbo engine. It also has a 48 volt mild hybrid technology and you're still achieving 15 mpgs for the city and 19 mpgs for the highway but that's not to be concerned when you're at this price variant. Go to the plug-in hybrid. We have the new 22 inch AMG cross spoke forged wheels. AMG brakes that's housing six pistons in the front. It's nearly a 15 inch disc. The back is nearly a 16 inch disc. So when you're thinking what you got, this is track ready. Forget about trying to save on fuel. Not when you're getting a handcrafted by turbo engine. And dynamically, well, we have the AMG Performance 4MATIC, which is the all wheel drive, dynamic select system, which can change to a comfort or to get it more active in the sport mode with the AMG electronic limited slip differential. And you have to back it with an AMG Performance exhaust with AMG performance engine mounts too, so it's going to be smoother. And when you're going into that 48 volt mild hybrid technology, Mercedes does a great job in the sense of making it where you don't feel the engine cut off. You're gonna hear it though, because you got the performance exhaust. Chrome elements are going to surround the lower skirt and around the window trim. This is the box example. They have a coupe as well. The coupe will not get these wheels standard. You'll have to option it. Going against rivals becomes one of the big problems because the BMW X5M competition has 617 reasons that it feels that it's gonna be more performance driven. So when you're considering the pricing at what you're getting, it's going to be about 30 grand more here, but you're getting more plush interior amenities, whereas the BMW is going to be a little bit more firm and more towards the sport. This is going to get luxury than sport. Audi SQ7, because they don't make an RSQ7. It's not going to have as much power as this. You only got 500 horsepower. Going to the RSQ8, it's going to be more comparable to the coupe not the box. LED tail lights, the lower gets the quad exhaust tips. You can blacken this out with the AMG night package, which we don't have. It'll tack on a few grand in which all the chrome elements will be blacked out on the side. On the 580 for the off-road variant, they're going to add a few more pieces of chrome. So it'll give a visual style look of a off-road variant vehicle. Power tailgate to 33.3 cubic feet of storage. Power seat adjustment for the front, heated, ventilated, AMG badging. I like the two-tone memory for the driver and passenger. Headroom and leg room. If you're thinking you need to go GLS because you need more room, you might want to think again because it is a deep foot well. It's basically the same center cluster with the wood inlays that opens up with the wireless charging pad, USB 12 volt, and 
the key fob for the GLE 63. These are also heated and ventilated for your cup holders. The dashboard gets the brush aluminum with the ambient lighting that goes into the door. That's the power seat adjustments for the front seats. Napa leather is going to surround the rest of the dash with two 12.3 infotainment screens. One that has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. You have an off-road page, which this is going to be a little bit more handy for that GLE 580, which will increase the car, which will increase the clearance by 1.2 inches. We have the track pack. And we have the performance. You also have the dynamic modes right here, which you can change everything on the fly to make it as comfortable as you like, or as sport derived as you like. Even putting it into race to get the full 603 horsepower. Wi-Fi hotspot, switch it to reverse. You do have full trajectory. It is a 360 degree camera. The steering wheel, this is the AMG performance line. So that means you have the ability to change the dynamics there, the suspension, it's a leather wrapped, heated. These are touch sensitive pads, so you don't have to use the touch pad here. You can actually use it here. And on this side, it will be for the gauge cluster, which is configurable. Heads up display, auto dimming rear view mirror, and a large pano moon roof. There isn't any pass through, but you get the ambient lighting that goes around the grab handles. You can raise and lower the suspension. And going back to that door, it's gonna be soft materials found everywhere. One touch up and down for the windows and a large storage pocket with the beverage holder carved out. For the back seats, headroom and leg room. And this is what I meant by, you don't have to go up to the next tier. You're gonna have plenty of leg space for the back seat occupants, storage behind both of the front seats, USB ports, a couple of storage tiers, with air vents, cup holders, and armrests, and power sunshades for the rear windows and the ambient lighting that's gonna surround pretty much everything. It's gonna be soft to touch, the same as the front, and this area here is going to be the hard plastic with a large beverage holder. Sliding into the center, you do have your own feet space, but if you do that, you're not going to be comfortable. So I would say sit down like this, and because of the seat material, it is very plush and soft, even sitting into the center. The back part will be a little bit more hard, but you'll share a little bit of feet, butt, and shoulder, and headroom is not going to be a problem because you're sitting back instead of upwards. 603 horsepower is carved out of that handcraft 4.0 liter bi-turbo V8 and 627 pound-feet of torque. That's a lot of power. I mean, no car really needs anything over 500 horsepower. And I'm saying that, and I review vehicles for a living. And that's because most people are not gonna take this on a track. At around $130-ish thousand dollars, I might consider taking this on a track if I'm gonna spend that much dough because why else would you get these forged wheels that are lighter weight, get all this AMG performance tuning for the suspension, for the ride, and that V8 engine? Might as well actually take advantage of it. For most of the people, they're not. They're gonna just drive this as a daily and in and out of traffic and at stoplights racing people to show them that you get zero to 60 under four seconds, which is insane. The nice thing that Mercedes has done this year though is instead of just going all full electric, we now have a plug-in variant, which is amazing. And I only say that because when you're considering BMW, they didn't have really any competition. And for the X5 plug-in, they increase the power quite a bit, so it's gonna have a lot more power than this, and it's gonna have a little bit more capabilities, but for the first year, I will let things slide only because we're finally getting it in the main screen. The 580, getting that off-road package, I don't know if that's a plus or a negative. I mean, we already have around 7.5 inches of clearance. I don't think we need 8.6 to nearly nine inches, but to each its own. And if you're wanting that much higher of ground clearance, you can also option a GLS and then put the 63 behind it and you got the same engine. We have it in Sport Plus, so that way we can test the performance. Here we go.
it's a symphony. And even with these larger wheels, it's still a smooth drive. I'm not going to say it's the smoothest variant, but it is one of the most quiet. The seats are the most comfortable. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons and starting off with the pros about the GLE 63 has to be that you're getting this engine plus all the upgrades that they did. The mild refresh, it did make it look a little bit more athletic in the front. In the interior, it's more or less the same design layout, but I like that you get the augmented navigation. It's basically a reality navigation for the heads up display, which makes it a lot easier for somebody that's driving long distance because they never have to look off the screen. The adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist is by far one of the best in class compared to anybody. It's very wide in the interior and you can actually fit a family of five in this. So you don't have to option a third row variant or go into a GLS 63S and spend about 20 grand more. But the big problem that I have is BMW X5 M competition, 617 horsepower. It's faster. Now it's not gonna be a huge difference. It's tenths of a second, but you're also saving at least 10 to $15,000. This is more comfortable, that's gonna be more sport to ride. So you have to figure out which animal that you're looking for in the sense of, do you want performance and luxury or do you just want full blown performance in which it's gonna take you over a thousand miles to get used to those seats. And this is what a bi-turbo gets. Keeps you planted in the seat. When I put it into comfort, the major difference is the road noise will start filtering in and we do not have a button to activate the exhaust note. You have to pay for every single feature when you get into Mercedes. Some other cons about the vehicles in the back seat, you do not have the ability to open the pano for the visor or both sunshades on both door panels. And I know that's nitpicking, but at 130 plus thousand, it's, it really isn't. You don't have a home plug, but a pro is if you were to option a Maybach, you're actually getting the wood inlays here that's derived out of that. This is just your normal drive. So that's gonna get you around 19 MPGs-ish, maybe 14 here and there. And one of the best features is always something simple through the inbox. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Turn off the climate control. I'm deactivating the air conditioning. In which a lot of vehicles are starting to do this or they adapted it more or less from Mercedes because when you're getting into this tier of vehicle, you have nothing but luxury. You don't have to touch anything or hardly move your hands off the steering wheel because the adaptive cruise control will take care of you for a longer ride than any of the rivals. As for Audi, I like the SQ7. It is one of my favorite variants, but it's super tight to go into the third row. If I go into the RSQ8, the pricing is about the same as this. If I drop it down to an SQ5, there's no performance that's gonna be like this. So that's why I would bump it up to those tiers in which when you get into the RSQ8, it's more or less a detuned Lamborghini. So you're expecting it to be crazy fast with a lot of power, but this still will have more horsepower than that variant. So it is one of the best in the sense of getting the performance and the luxury blend. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Mercedes Benz of Clearwater for giving us this 2024 Mercedes AMG GLE 63 for our car review.